Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service, the last Sunday before Christmas, the 19th of December, 2021. I hope you're getting a bit excited about the birth of Jesus, about spending time with friends and family, but just be blessed together as we share as family this morning. And we pray that God bless this service as we share together. Our call to worship this morning is taken from John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to worship this morning, <coughs> on this last Sunday before Christmas, the last Sunday before the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we pause and reflect on for God so loved the world. Father, just those words make us bow in worship and in awe and in gratitude. Lord, we thank you for word and message. We thank you for the scriptures, for each other, for the year that's been, for the year that's to come, the rain that has fallen for each person that is here, each person listening this morning. Lord, we just pray that you will bless us as we share together. But Father, too, it's a time for us just to once again remember and to reflect on our faith journey. To see where we stand, where, where we are in our faith. Does Christmas still excite us? Do we get excited at the prospect of the birth of Jesus? Or is it more about the presence and the and the drinking and the eating and the whatever, Lord? But help us just to bring it back to you. To bring the heart of worship back to you. Forgive us where we've slipped up and where we've just gone ahead with the flow and just forgotten how important this is to you and to us. So, Lord, speak to us this morning, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Luke, Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. Luke 1, 39 to 45. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? <coughs> As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Just that far this morning, and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. I guess we can say at last a Christmas reading. And I don't know, sometimes when we turn to Scripture, we find ourselves immersed in what I call beautiful Scripture. There's nothing there to encourage or to teach, reprimand. They're just beautiful. they moy, <laughs> to put it bluntly. I don't know, they void verses that cause us to pause and consider the wonder that they contain. <coughs> Sorry. Verses that take your breath away. Verses that take flight in choruses with words like these. You are beautiful beyond description. 
too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, absolutely beautiful. The preamble to this passage is centered on Mary's obedience. We have this picture of the angel visiting Mary. And he tells her what is going to happen. And Mary, young and innocent, proclaims, but I am a virgin. And so it begins. The fascinating miracles of Christmas. The birth of of Jesus with a simple statement. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary's response was simply to get up, to go, to visit her aunt Elizabeth, um, the wife of Zechariah, the priest who had been turned mute until his son John the Baptist was born. Go and read it. It's just before this. It's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And then our passage today, a passage that doesn't really leave any room for expansion, only for absorption. So turning to Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, let's read it again, shall we? Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judea in the hill country, straight to Zechariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, You are blessed among women. And the baby in your womb, in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the baby in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. So we see this preamble, this obedience, this, this belief. But I, I don't know, it just takes us all over the place, this miracle of Christmas, this amazing picture. And hidden in this Christmas narrative is one verse, a verse that I've probably read over and over and over again. But one that I saw for the first time as I prepared today. Verse 37, just before our reading. For no word from the Lord will ever fail. No word from the Lord will ever fail. And I guess that's sort of hidden in this whole Christmas message. The Christmas story, God cannot lie. The Christmas story is fulfilling God's word. And we can trust God's word because God's nature is not like ours. In Numbers 23, we read, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Isaiah reminds us that, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <laughs> Could you see this? There's a, I, I don't know, it's mind blowing. Secondly, even when we're deceitful, even when we're unfaithful, God remains faithful. 2 Timothy 3. Um, 2 Timothy 2.13 reminds us, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Thirdly, God is not a God of false hope. James reminds us, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Fourthly, David, in Psalm 119, verse 160, um, says that Dave, God is truthful. He says, all your words are true, all your righteous laws are eternal. 
And you and I are called to, commanded if you like, to imitate God's truthful nature. In the commandments, commandment number nine, I think it is, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Because the whole message of Christmas is undergirded by who God is. And I suppose one of the biggest reasons for me when it comes to trusting God, when it comes to trusting in His promises, His word is found in Proverbs 12, 22. The Lord detests lying lips, but He delights in people who are trustworthy. I don't know, I just take so much comfort from that. Understanding that lies break God's heart. So why would He lie to us? Number six, God's good, uh, gifts are always good. James again, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And Christmas, the birth of Jesus, is the best gift you and I were promised throughout the Old Testament, and which is fulfilled in the New Testament. The trustworthiness of God. And then the last reason why we can just trust this whole story, this whole picture, um, I guess maybe it's a challenge. Lying, deceit, empty promises are all part of our sinful nature. But Colossians 3, 9 and 10 calls us, therefore, to not lie to each other. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Short and sweet, God does not lie. Why should we? God is faithful. Why aren't we? God is Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. A promise made and a promise kept. Like I said, amazing, beautiful, beyond description. So I challenge you all, myself again, I, I, I don't know, I think for the first time as I'm preaching this this morning, I'm really getting excited about Christmas. Um, so go and read it again, Luke 1, 39 to 45. Let you imagine, saw, see where it takes you, read a bit before, read after, and then maybe just pause after reading today's passage. And read Mary's song in verses 46 to 55. It's referred to as the Magnificat. The Magnificat. Mary said, My soul glories, glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers in their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And just there, as I read that last bit, Hebrews 13 verse 5, a promise from God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So again, as we wrap up, don't hesitate if God calls you or prompts you to keep reading because it only gets better. From the birth of John the Baptist to Zechariah's song and on to the birth of Jesus in chapter 2. But more about that on Christmas Day. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, just thank you for the joy that this message has just brought to me. Just reaffirming. And I pray for all of us, Lord, that it reaffirms the faithfulness of God the basis of the Christmas story, the wherefore, the why for, and the how. 
the promise and the fulfillment, the wonder and the miracle. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your message this morning. Lord, we just pray for our town, our people, your church, um, our loved ones. May they be blessed at this time as we celebrate the birth of our Savior and honor you and glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online this morning. Um, really, please, <clears throat> open invitation. Come and join us on Saturday, Saturday the 25th, 9 o'clock. Uh, we'd love to see you. Um, come and join us for, uh, for our Christmas service, um, a celebration, of carols and joy and wonder, joy to the world, the Lord has come. We'd love to see you. But thank you for joining us this morning. And I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's will.